Gordon Cooper flew the last and longest mission of the Mercury program, and I'm going to show you his capsule in Houston, Texas. Hey, I'm John Williams, and I'm at the Space Center Houston in Houston, Texas, and this is the Faith 7 Mercury capsule. So this was the last Mercury capsule to fly in the Mercury program, which was America's first manned spaceflight program. So this capsule right here held the crew of Gordon Cooper, who flew in 1963. And you can see, uh, version of him inside there and the mercury capsule was very small and even the seat that Gordon Cooper was in was molded to fit his body inside there. A good quote by John Glenn is that you wear the capsule instead of getting inside of it. Pretty funny. So if you look around you can see that the capsule is coated in a black sort of paint. That is um, a type of paint to resist the heat of re-entry since re-entry heats the capsule to thousands of degrees. And if you look at the top of the capsule, you can see some two slots where the parachutes would have been right up there and some other electronics where there would have been a bomb in case the capsule sunk that would have exploded and sent up a buoy or some sort of location device right up at the top of that capsule. So the hatch of this mercury capsule included around like 40 explosive bolts. So when the capsule landed in the ocean and was lifted onto the, an aircraft carrier, the astronaut would pull a ring that would explode all those bolts and explode the hatch off. And that was for um, safety reasons in case the capsule was in the ocean and started to sink, the astronaut could blow the hatch off and they could escape quickly, which actually happened on Liberty Bell 7. So. Gordon Cooper named this capsule Faith 7, as in all the faith that every American and engineer had put into the space program at this point. And this was the first American space mission that lasted over a day, or the manned space mission that lasted over a day, around 34 hours. And the mission that flew before it was Wally Schirra, Sigma 7, and he only was up there for six hours. Meanwhile, this guy, he performed 22 orbits, incredible, which lasted 34 hours. And if we look at the bottom of the capsule over here, you can see under the heat shield, half of the heat shield is still there. That's where most of the ablative material was, so the capsule could resist the heat of re-entry. So the backup crew to this mission was actually Alan Shepard, who was scheduled to fly after this mission if they flew more Mercury capsules. So this mission launched on May 15th, 1963, when Gordon Cooper flew to space and he performed around 22 orbits, as I said, before uh, landing in the ocean. So after he made it to space, Gordon took a few naps, performed experiments over his, day, over his day and a half in space, and even used the first waste management system where he went to the bathroom. And this was the first mission where the astronaut could use the bathroom because the missions before, they didn't know how to successfully do it and keep it, you know, and make it easy for the astronaut. It's interesting. So yeah, after that, on the 22nd orbit, he performed the retro burn rockets, which would slow his capsule down to the point that he would have to re-enter the atmosphere. And after he did, he landed in the ocean, lifted up onto a carrier, blew the hatch open. That concluded the last Mercury mission of the Mercury program. And that paved the way for the Gemini program. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Click the subscribe button and check out my other content. Have a great day. Our mission is to make you space intelligent.